Quite Greedy 3 Dears. Welcome to today's episode. We're going to be making Nebula today from Guardians of the Galaxy and the Avengers, played by the very beautiful Karen Gillan in the movies. Uh, this is the Wicked version, and I'll show you how I painted it all up. We'll talk about the colours I used and some of the techniques and the washes to get it to this final effect. So stay tuned. <music> Now Nebula has been printed on the GK2 using some Jam J Standard Pro resin. I love this resin. Did a whole review on it and get yourself some from the description and get yourself a 5% discount by following the link. Now it's all printed remarkably using this resin and the wonderful Uniformation GK2. I love that printer. I've also done a review on that which you can check out in the description. And it's come off the bill plate. Wonderful. Everything is good. I am happy. Printing has gone well. Just look at the quality of uh, Nebula's head there. Look at the detail. Look how fine everything looks. Mmm, it's all looking wonderful. Make sure you clean your prints up. Make sure you sand the bits of nubbings down. And you give it a little bit of a brush over with a brush to keep it nice and clean. Now, I've given it a, a, a coat all over of some black, some Chaos Black from Citadel. And used an Alien Purple from the Army Painter Mega Set just to paint down that central line on her face. Uh, don't worry about overspill because we're going to be doing some masking and putting the blue in but get that purple all around her noggin now just to lower that a little bit i'm taking some coven purple which is a really good purple that goes lovely with this don't look at the splatters they did not happen they are in your imagination and i'm just going to use this top down to lighten up the purple and there you go splatters don't matter because we're going to cover those with paint just be careful when you're painting you don't let splatters hit your wonderful 3d print now i'm going to take some rust -Oleum clear some of this crystal clear here and i'm going to varnish that on because i want to protect that purple as much as i can from the next stages of the masking and the painting now and carmine red is the color that i'm using Using for her leather. Now this is kind of like a burgundy red and it is a perfect colour for Nebula's costume. Now I want to give it a layer all over but I'm not too fussed if a little bit of the black pokes through because that will add to the leather effects. So I don't want too much but a little bit of a shade, hue if you will, of black popping through will not break the model at all. So give it a good coat all over, same again for her trousers, same again for her belt, give everything a good old blast across with this in carmine red. This is a wonderful colour, one of my favourite colours. Her arm too will be having this red, the other arm will be silver, so this is the only other bit that we're going to be painting red. And again, exactly the same process, exactly the same paint, exactly the same theory behind it. Now I'm using some of this Caraberg Crimson. This is a Citadel shade and I'm going to use this to add some low light to the red and I'm coming as you can see from the bottom up there just to make the bottom areas look a little bit shady under her boob area and underneath the arms etc just to add another layer of paint a je ne sais quoi to the colour of the red same again with her with her pants with her trousers just from the bottom up just giving her all that a coat of this wonderful citadel now, chrome metal from green stuff is what I'm going to be using for her arm. Oh, this stuff is amazing. I came across this a few months ago and I absolutely adore the stuff. Uh, so give it her arm a good coat of that. There's a top part and a bottom part and just give it a real good blast all over. Leave some of the black coming through. That's absolutely fine. And that is the arm done and dusted. Now over to the bench and I'm going to use some of this Vallejo liquid mask to just protect that purple area. Now you can use the tape and I've left the tape out there as you can see in the background. I did consider doing it with tape but I decided to go liquid mask. You can do whichever you wish. But I just thought liquid mask would be easier for me and I painted it on across the purple area to protect that paint. Now I did make a bit of a faux pas, just don't tell anybody right to our secret. I missed a tiny little bit on a face and I had to scrape it off which made a little bit of a mark on there but you can't really see it unless you look really hard and I'll just shh, don't tell anyone so I painted it all across there just to protect that purple liquid mask is great stuff really leave it on for about 15 20 minutes and I'm taking some of this crystal blue color for the first color for the sides and the rest of Nebula's head and I'm just going to spray that on using my airbrush doesn't matter if you go over the purple because in theory the purple is all protected give it a good even layer over there I do want to cover the black on this occasion I don't really want any of the black coming through and ionic blue is what I'm going to be using just to add some light areas some highlighted areas to her skin uh, I don't want to change the color completely I want to make it look a little bit two-tone and add a little bit more of that just visual effect really to her head so it's not boring to look at and once that's done 
get your thumb and take off the liquid mass. This stuff does generally come off really, really easy. Just don't leave it on too long. Give it a pull and pull it all away. Thought to take a moment just to talk to you about the Patreon that I'm in where I got this Nebula Bus from. Now I got it from Wicked. If you don't know Wicked, Wicked has three subsidiaries if you like. There's Wicked Berserk and the SW3D Patreon, Star Wars basically. Now these Patreons are incredible and if you haven't joined one or all of them I suggest you do so. You get shed loads of prints every single month and when you join you get a massive joining bonus there's loads and loads of prints so if you like your star wars if you like your marvel if you like your, your your dc you can choose which avenue you want to go down or you can choose them all and for about 10 quid a month you get shed loads of fantastic models like this i'll put a link in the description where you can check them all out but make sure you check them out they're absolutely fantastic Anyway, back to Nebula. And what I usually do with the eyes, as you know, I paint them black first and then I paint them white. But Nebula's eyes are going to be a little bit different. We're going to paint them white first because I just want an outer layer of white on the edges. And once that white has dried, I'm going to allow it to dry really well. I'm going to take some of this plate mail while it's drying and just do the metallic -y bits on her head. Take a really narrow brush. Just be careful and take your time and follow the lines that are already there on this fantastic model and just paint all the silver bits nice and silver. That will of course include the top plate on her head and the side plates too. to them hub holes and as you can see I've painted them with just some matte black right across the eyes. I've just left a, a smidgen of soupçon of white on the edges just to make the black stick out some more and now I'm going to take some of that ionic blue and some white which was the base colour if you recall for a face. I'm going to pop it on a really small brush and use a dry brush technique to just highlight some of the areas of her face and her head. Again I want to add another layer of paint to this. I want it to be different. I don't want it to look as a single colour so that's the third different colour of the same sort of similar blue that I've put across it on her head and I'm doing exactly the same with the cotton purple and some white same kind of technique on a dry brush and this time I'm just going to do the middle part and I'm going to concentrate on her forehead and across her nose I want that to look a lighter area and just on her chin as well to lighten all that up again we're adding texture we're adding depth we're adding colour to Nebula and that's what her face looks like with the eyes in the silver done and the highlighted areas all done and dusted now getting some of this imperial gold this is the gold I'm going to be using for the goldy bits on Nebula and I've done this base as you can see the little the little Nebula bit on the base anyway I've just uh, used my airbrush colors the two main colors for her to color that Nebula sign and I'm going to use gold around it just to make it look a little bit more pizzazz and a bit shiny and the same gold on a flat brush being really really careful I'm just doing the emblems on her clothes if you do this carefully with a flat brush using it at a sort of 45 degree angle you will not get it all over the leather effect try brushing some silver across the gun adding a little bit of gold to the gun as well just to make the gun look a little bit snazzy and as you saw there I painted her fingers blue now this panel line stuff is incredible get yourself this if you haven't got it I'll try and put a link in the description for you it's brilliant ink and this you just put on a little gap like you see me do there and it will track it will run down it will follow gravity and pull down you can fill those little gaps in there with it absolutely perfectly i love this stuff came across it quite by accident saw someone else using it watch it here put it on and it just traces itself down it's like runs like water it's beautiful and it just adds that black in and there's a, such a fine brush with it that you can use to pull it where you want to as well and if you get a bit on the skin it don't matter just wipe it off with your finger or a little bit of tissue job done fantastic stuff and as you can see that's what it looks like now all i'm doing here on the eyes is i'm using some vallejo clear gloss to just make those eyes stand out and pop and pizzazz and that is the eye done once that last bit of gloss is on there with the black as well as you can see in the little grooves she looks amazing bit of red on her lip just a little red a little bit of purple that's her pretty much done now for the hands or the arm i've used that black stuff as well the liner to cover all those little lines in her arm and that just makes the gray look even more standy out here makes that metal look amazing now going back to the gold i'm just going to touch some of a uniform 
up with this in certain areas. Again, that flat brush is really key here. Just take your time with this and paint the gold areas, keep it off your leather effect. You don't want to get it all over that. But just remember you have sealed it. So if you do get a little bit on your leather, you can just take a little bit of a wet brush or a wet cotton wool bud and just wipe it all the way off. Do all the goldy bits on her arms, on her chest, on her pants, her trouser bits. So get all that done using the same thing. Take your time and make sure you cover all the areas you need to. And that's the gold done. And that burgundy colour and the gold, they contrast each other beautifully. And she looks amazing. So to age that leather up, I'm using some dark tone, a quick shade from Army Painter. And I am literally going to take it on a nice big flat brush and I'm going to wallop it on there. I'm going to splodge it on there. Do not be afraid of washes. They're fantastic. Get it on there and it will settle and stick to the grooves and the lower areas. And it will attach itself to the innards of the smaller, finer prints, uh, parts of the print that you can't quite see. And it will add that shade and background in the background and add that effect of age and depth to it. Just get it on a brush and splodge it on there if you've put too much on wipe it off you've got time you're not going to ruin anything and the effect it gives you is absolutely incredible i love washes i think they look great to make a leather effect they look good on boots they look good on this occasion on her leather jacket and they just add that another shade to the color and it makes it those little effects that you do these tiny little changes make such a dramatic difference to your models and i'm adding some shade to the arm too right back to that panel liner I'm just going to use this to add a few little exenuating areas across her belt on her trousers I've also done it across the top as well which I didn't pick up on video but some of the major areas in the folds of the clothes I just want that black to stand out a little bit more I just want it to look a little bit darker than the rest of it as you can see there and the grooves just to add again that visual effect to it of depth wonderful stuff now taking skeleton bone you know you guys know this is my favorite color in the world and on a big fat makeup dry brush i'm going to use this skeleton bone get most of that paint off to use it to age and make some of the leather look a little bit decrepit and a little bit warm and a little bit used leather brown is a fantastic color to make leather look aged and you can use it on brown leather you can use it on red leather you can use it on any kind of leather really don't put too much on you don't want to overpower it you just want to put it in certain areas where the leather would naturally wear the higher points the seams across there as you can see where all the main parts are sticking out and some of the seam areas pop it on not too heavy not too heavy at all you don't want too much on your brush take 99 percent of it off your brush and just give it that look of decrepit aged battered leather i'll show you a close-up of it in a second and you will see exactly what i mean when i talk about an aged effect on the leather and there we go look at that absolutely brilliant easy effect with the shade wash and with the skeleton dry brush looks incredible Now here I've just taken a flat brush and I'm using the skeleton bone again and again I'm using it in a dry brush technique to just make some of the belt stick out a little bit more. That's the centre part of a really between the trousers and the top and I want to make that look like a definitive line so I'm giving that a little bit more of a blast across just to separate the areas off and separate the edges a little bit. I've left it the same colour because I think it works really well but I'm just using it to change the level of depth of the highlight. Plate, male, metal. Any silver will do here, and I'm just dry brushing the base. The base of this model, I don't want it to take away from the main model, and the actual uh, logo is quite spectacular and quite colourful. So I want to keep the base nice and normal looking, and I don't want it to stand out too much. I'm just using some silver right the way across to dry brush on top of a matte black, and that's Nebula done. She wasn't hard to do, it wasn't complicated, she wasn't difficult. Let's have a final look, see what you think.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed that greedy three days. I hope you found that of interest. I hope you've enjoyed the making and the painting of old Nebula here. Um, if you do like what you see today, please support the channel. And um, We're only a little channel and we're growing, but your support really, really is important to us. If you want to support the channel, you can do so in a number of ways. You can uh, join the Patreon scheme. We do run a Patreon and if you want to join that, you'd be more than welcome. And I do try to give you some free models. Uh, I've just had one commissioned recently and I'm going to try to do some more, but as you know, now they're really expensive so the more patrons we get the quicker we can get that rolling um, if you want to subscribe to the channel that would be really appreciated every subscription helps and pushes the videos forward as does commenting on them as does liking them and as does sharing them out of everything if you want to get involved in the channel i would ask you just give us a comment leave me a comment tell me what you think Give, get in touch, communicate, say whether you liked it, say whether you didn't. I'd just rather hear that you're enjoying the stuff that we're producing. Or if you're not, I'd like to hear that as well. Is there anything different you'd have done? Is there any questions you want to ask? It's the usual stuff. We're quite an open and friendly channel and I'll do everything I can to help you guys out. And in the same token, if you've got any advice for me, things you think I should have done differently, I'd love to hear that as well. So hope you've enjoyed that today. I'll see you real, real soon. I've got a couple of uh, prints behind me that I need to put together and paint. I've got a couple of reviews to do. So stay tuned to Greedy3D and I'll be popping them out as soon as I can. See you next time.